Mathematics of Chemistry, what is a mole? Today we're going to be talking about counting in chemistry, what is a mole, Avogadro's number, as you can see an image of Avogadro right here, measuring by mass, and some worked examples. Counting in chemistry. Chemistry is the study of matter, and matter is counted in three different ways, by counting, by mass, and by volume. Knowing how the count, mass, and volume are related allows us to convert among these units. In chemistry, instead of measuring with a dozen, we will measure with a mole, which is abbreviated M-O-L. What is a mole? Well, let's talk about what's not a mole. A mole isn't a little bump on your skin, it's not an undercover agent, and it's not a furry little animal with a long snout and really, really scary long claws. Instead, a mole, abbreviated MOL, is formally defined as the number of carbon atoms in 12.011 grams of carbon. The mole is basically a representation of a given amount of atoms that make up the average atomic mass of carbon. In one mole of carbon, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which happen to have a mass of 12.011 grams. In a mole of helium, there is still 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which happen to have a mass of 4.00260 grams. Why is there a difference in mass, though? I thought they had the same number of atoms in one mole. Well, it is true that each sample has the same number of atoms, but the mass of each atom, as we know from atomic structure, in the sample is different based on the number of protons and neutrons that each individual atom contains. In each atom of carbon, there are six protons and six neutrons, which make up an atomic mass of 12 atomic mass units. In each atom of helium, there are two protons and two neutrons, which makes up a mass of four atomic mass units. So the number of things in one mole of a substance is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So one mole will always represent 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole of any element is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. One mole of a covalent compound will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. One mole of an ionic compound is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. And one mole of ions will be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ions. So in this image down here, we have a balloon filled with helium representing one mole of helium, a graduated cylinder of water representing a mole of water, a mole of copper, a mole of aluminum, salt, as in sodium chloride, of course, and sugar, which the chemical name of sugar is sucrose. Here's another way of looking at it. I have a substance, a particle, a symbolic form, and particles in one mole. If I wanted to represent atomic nitrogen, I'd be talking about an atom with a symbol of N, and in one mole, I'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms. Nitrogen gas, which we know as a diatomic, would be considered a molecule, representation N2, and in one mole of diatomic nitrogen, there would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Water, water is a molecule with a formula of H2O, and one mole of water would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. A calcium ion, well, you know, that's an ion, with a symbolic form of Ca plus 2, and in one mole of calcium ions, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ions. Calcium fluoride, which is represented as a formula unit because it's an ionic compound, which formula is CaF2, has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in one mole. And finally, just like we saw, sucrose is a molecule with a chemical formula of C12H22O11, and in one mole of sucrose, we'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Measuring by mass, otherwise known as molar mass, you know, the mass of one mole. 
one mole has a mass equal to the gram formula mass, which we'll call GFM, or molar mass of an atom, a compound, a molecule, or an ion. The molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of the substance. Remember, if we're talking about one mole, we're talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Methane consists of molecules each containing one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, and the chemical formula for methane is CH4. How can we calculate the mass of one mole of methane? Well, one mole of CH4 molecules consists of one mole of carbon atoms and four moles of hydrogen atoms. And you might say, well, how do you know that? Because we have subscripts here with an assumed one by the carbon, so that represents one carbon, one mole of carbon, and a four right here, which represents four hydrogens or four moles of hydrogens. The mass of one mole of methane can be found by summing the masses of the carbon and the hydrogen atoms present. So the mass of one mole of carbon times the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, equals 12. The mass of four moles of hydrogen, well you have four hydrogens times the atomic mass, which is one gram, four times one gives me four. 12 plus four gives me 16. So the mass of one mole of methane molecules is equal to 16 grams. Let's look at an example. Find the gram formula mass of sodium hydroxide. Well, we know the formula for sodium hydroxide is NaOH. So I'm going to have NaONH. When I look at this formula, I can see that I have one Na, and the atomic mass of sodium is 23. So one times 23 is 23 grams. I have one oxygen, so one times 16, because the atomic mass is 16, so that's gonna be 16 grams. And then I have one hydrogen, so one hydrogen times one gram, because that's the atomic mass of hydrogen, is equal to one gram of hydrogen. And if I add these up, 23 plus 16 plus one, I get a total of 40, grams per one mole of sodium hydroxide. And that is how you determine gram formula mass. Let's look at some other examples. Find the gram molecular mass of water. Now in this case, we can say molecular mass because we know that water is a molecule. I could not say gram molecular mass with something like sodium hydroxide because that is an ionic compound. So we know that the formula for water is H2O. The most important thing that you need to do is make sure that you write the correct formula. That is key. Then I'm going to list my elements. I have hydrogen and oxygen involved here. A Couple of equal signs. So I look at my subscripts. I have two moles of hydrogen, each with an atomic mass of one gram. So that's going to give me two grams. I have one oxygen here. One oxygen times the atomic mass of 16 grams. So one times 16 is 16 grams, and then I'm going to add them together. So two plus 16 gives me 18 grams per one mole of water. So that is the gram molecular mass or molar mass of water. Find the gram formula mass of copper two sulfate. So we know that the formula for copper two sulfate is CuSO4. Now a little reminder, how do we find that? Well, we know that SO4 is going to be minus two because that's on table E of our reference tables. Since the name states copper two sulfate, we know it must be Cu plus two because that Roman numeral tells us what the charge is on the copper. So now that I know that I have the correct formula, I can line my elements up. So Cu, S, and oxygen. If I look at my formula, I know that I have one copper with an atomic mass of 64. For sulfur, I have one sulfur times an atomic mass of 32 grams. So one times 32 is 32. And for oxygen, I know that I have four oxygens, each with an atomic mass of 16. So four times 16 is 64 grams. So when I add these all up, I'm going to get 160 grams per mole. For the last one, we have dinitrogen pentoxide. So N2O5. So I'm going to write out my atoms here. So I have nitrogen and oxygen involved. 
When I look at my formula, I see that I have two nitrogens times 14, which is the atomic mass. So two times 14 is 28 grams. For oxygen, I have five oxygens times 16. So five times 16 is 80. So when I add these both together, I'm going to get 108 grams per mole of N2O5. So now you have three different examples of how to find gram formula mass. So what did you learn? We talked about counting in chemistry, what is a mole and what's not a mole, Avogadro's number, measuring by mass, and then we did some worked examples at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.